weapon. If I cut the tricep, I can't wield the weapon. And then your quad. Yeah. You take out the quad, you can't walk. If you can't walk, you can't fight. So these are the things that we, we don't... Because even if I stabbed you in the stomach, even with, an, even with a small pocket knife, that's not going to do anything. That's a flesh wound. It's right. all adipose fat tissue. There's no organs that's being damaged right, right. With, with a little pocket knife, especially for someone who's, who's more... Girth, has yeah. more girth. Girth, yeah. girth right? right? So you have to take that into consideration. And then also thrusting and, um, and cutting the carotid artery, no matter what, offense or defense, in the quarter lot, that type of attack looks more like offensive. It's like slashes are more defensive. Right. You see what I mean? So yeah. you have to take all that into the, the legal implications when you're going to use your knife. Yeah. So the huh. goal is to not use your knife. Right. That's why we teach the awareness and avoidance. And we have different drills that allow you to recognize when it's going too far. So, so we're you're training put together a, a seminar for you to do. Something. Oh my God! <laughs> Jesus. We know some people. We know. We, yeah, we know a lot of people. <laughs> oh man, um, that what, what? It'd be an honor. Um, it'd be an honor. Yeah, dude. Yeah, let's put them in front of people because I want to hear. I want to hear more uh, of this. Yeah. And, and, and then we get a free ticket because we're posting the game. Sure, this is perfect. I like. It. But you know, I'm it's Filipino. really Filipino. <laughs> 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 no, but the, the, the way that I teach seminars is based on how Mike teaches it, right? It's right. completely different. I am going to have a, a PowerPoint presentation because you have to understand like yeah. what's going on. You can't just go in the floor and be like, oh, start swinging stuff. No, let's let's learn about this. Let's, I've let's always understand. hated that about seminars, by the way. What? PowerPoint? You go to sem- no, 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 they you just go jump in there. Okay. okay, everybody, we're going to do. I'm like, wow, that's fucking yeah. idiot. And I also, like, I would sit in a hall in a lecture hall and listen to to this presentation oh wow thank you yeah. man I would. that's that's what yeah. it should be and then yeah. be- before we get into it i actually bring in uh, what mike designed called a pork man so what it is it's a it's a it's a, it's a pork loin mm-hmm. uh, uh it's butterfly down the middle um and we take a wooden dowel and put it in the middle of that and that represents bone and then right. we we um wrap we wrap it up and put about 30 uh Layers of saran wrap on it. Yeah. Then I put denim. Yeah. Then I put denim on top of that. Mm. So that signifies clothing, right? right? right. So that, that pork can represent your limb, any part of your limbs, right? That way, I take out all these different knives, uh, yeah. live knives, Tonto, right. uh, Drop Point, Warncliffe, Karambit style knives, um, and serrated, then you slice into the scene and, and, I, and, I, and I show you like what type of knife really works for you. And when it comes down to it, the Warncliffe is the best style blade for self-defense because it's a straight edge. If you take a draw point blade here, so there it is, it's a trainer. So <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a straight edge all the way right. through. So if, I, if, I, if I'm cutting using the uh, base of the knife all the way down to its tip, when I make contact with, with that, with the heel of the knife and I'm dropping pressure, I'm creating a deeper, creating cut. deeper cut. And, it, and since it's a straight edge, as the farther and deeper I go, um, with the knife, you're, you're yeah. doing more damage. But if you have like a, like a karambit, not a karambit, but a drop point knife where yeah. the blade kind of curves like yeah, this, that way, yeah. I start at the heel. Once I get to that point, it w- raises the other side. Exactly, yeah. so you don't get a deeper cut. Hmm. And I would say that Mike Good Janich you know. is the first person who tacticalized the Warren Cliff blade, and this is called the Spider Co Yojimbo Two, and is and is and is the most. One of the most popularized you need knife. You need a new knife. See? <laughs> so, use this piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, you know, to each... I love it. To each is their own. You right. Know, you yeah. find out what works what for you, you. Yeah, what's comfortable. And then, and then when you actually take your your knife, your line knife, and actually cut something that's real, you realize that your thumb's going to get jammed or it's going to hurt because of the pressure right. there. That's why he even put this here. Yeah. So, so you're, it's, you're not, you're not going to... It's not going to hurt your thumb. Hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you take your knife out... Then open that out, right? So I will put it here. That might be pretty comfortable too, right? But if I'm actually striking with it and right. the grip right here, it might not work for me, but it might work for you. Then the other question is, is when it comes to use your knife, how do you get your knife out? Knife out. Yeah, you're never, right. you're Deployment. never gonna be, yeah. you're never gonna be here ready to go. Yeah. When you're attacked, you, you don't know what happens. Right. So you have to be able to have, and that's what Mike's a genius. You like be, the Emerson wave? Uh, no, I, abs- I absolutely hate it. Really? Oh yeah. I'll tell you why too. I mean, Please. to each to each their own. Once, so the, the way that oh, here we go, we're going off on tangent. But no, um, this is cool. I, I love this part. So the way that we teach how to hold the knife is the Filipino grip, and yes. that's this way. Yep. And then <laughs> this is would be like your your saber grip right here. So why the Filipino grip? Very good question because first off, you ever held a gun before? Yeah. So these last three fingers is what is really Holds controls the, the grip, finger. right? Yeah. This wraps around a control, and you put your thumb the opposite of the heel. The reason why? Because you aim with your thumb. We're so focused, like. Yeah. 
instinctually we can ring a doorbell, right? So when we aim with your thumb, we make contact with our opponent with the heel. So when you cut, you cut all the way through. So versus getting and a half ass cut, you're well. getting a full cut. You're aiming with the full length of the blade, yeah. right? Take the whole So you out. ask why the karambit, right? Mm -hmm. So if I have a karambit style, th there's going to be that that Emerson um, yeah. the, the little thing here, and I'm putting my thumb on that. That's very, very uncomfortable, especially I'm making movements, so it's gonna hurt my hand, right? Huh. And now you're, you're, you're also talking about deploying. That's, that's, that's fast, being able to pull, pull it out of your pants, but Mike has came up with the inertia opening that's as, as fast as the wave opening, and we've timed it, and the inertia is being able to drop and like that. That's how quick. And right. once again, I'm not, I'm not flicking it with my thumb. Right. I'm actually using the inertia of this blade to spin it on its pivot pin. So if you look, it's just this motion, right? right. So I do it like that, the inertia causes it to open. So from, <laughs> from my pocket, it's just back and you're in. Ooh. Yeah, and that's my other fast, knife. <laughs> and it's... <laughs> Yeah, no, I swear to God, he, he, he's the monthly <laughs> knife club. No, that's, that's awesome. That's he awesome. Gets yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I won this at a raffle. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's not. It's just it just doesn't work for me. But no, if, I get if it. If it works it. for you, then right. I'm not going to stop you. It's yeah. just what what. What's what, more comfortable for the individual you, exactly, is what it needs exactly. to be. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to say that this is the best knife. To me, it's the best knife because I'm well, trained. Well, also because this. you want to do the. You don't want to escalate to flipping the blade out right away. You want to be able to yeah. still use it as an impact weapon. If you need to go into the wave, then you have that. Well, I'm, I'm going to go for empty hand first. So my goal is to empty hand, create distance, and then right. assess the situation. If I can escape, I'm going to escape. If I can't escape, does he have another weapon? Is his weapon on the ground? If right. his weapon's on the ground, then I can't pull out my knife. Right. Then I switch to my transition weapon, like my flashlight, which I have um, you know, in, in my back pocket, and I would use that just to maybe flash. And if my exit is, I have to go past him, I would try to, dis uh, I wouldn't use the word distract, but just try to get him out of the way so I can run away. Disrupt his thoughts this, yeah exactly stumble the brain yeah so there's there's a I like mine better there's a, there's a lot of tactics involved and that's why i love it so much because it's when it comes down to it everything is very easy and instinctual and it right. it's calls to us so let's just train those movements with our hands like you said you know? it's the natural reactions that we already have weaponize those versus trying to teach you ones that you're uncomfortable with and your body's not exactly. accustomed to exactly and, and that that's really how our our lessons are geared for it's like what is your body able to do yeah. not what i'm trying to tell it to do that's a dope <laughs> that's so, cool yeah, yeah so it goes uh, um yeah so i do that presentation and I, I do the blood loss thing i explain like um dude let's do it yeah uh, sure. i would love that uh, yeah uh, we'll set uh, it up we'll, we'll, we'll sponsor something for you yeah <laughs> we'll dude host this it. guy no, we'll no, learn how man. fast I'm, it takes for somebody to bleed out <laughs> no, it's, yeah it's something you should know <laughs> no it's, it's important <laughs> Not if you about have time that. to go to Starbucks and get something before he dies, <laughs> don't boom, don't listen to them. Be aware and be avoidant. Okay? <laughs> People avoid us anyways. Uh, yeah, they avoid us like the plague. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So that's too funny. But no, this is no. Awesome. That, that's definitely no. Put that's together, like I said. I would, I would sit for that lecture. I, I there's would. um, we're we're affiliated obviously with a bunch of people. Yeah, yeah. And there's a guy by the name of Mark Cardenas. You know who you are. Um, he puts together these. Did uh, you say Mark? Mark? Did I say Mark? Mike. Mike. <laughs> Mike. Oh, dang. Mike Cardenas. Yeah, Mark Cardenas, a wonderful wow. guy. Um, Can't he puts together um, seminars, and not just any one system. He'll Ooh. like we were just on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. He does cross training seminars. That's cool. Where you have four different instructors will come on. And they get like all oh, fifty minutes each. You ever and heard then, of Mace? Yeah. Those. Are, that's him. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's his thing. The, the goal was for like, cause it's so funny thing is my first seminar I've ever attended as a uh -huh. student was at a May seminar. Oh, and wow. like how would cool it would be to complete the full circle and like be a student and be able to teach there. That's that was the goal. And All right, let me talk to you. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to. You don't He's have gonna, to. He watches the show religiously. Oh, He's man. gonna be there on Saturday. Oh. Yeah, but you're not. God dang it. Sorry, I'll be out of town. Uh, Cancel it. No, <laughs> I'm just. <kidding. laughs> Sorry. You watch nothing. Well, when this <laughs> airs, I guess it would be the day before. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, we, we could, get our timetables wrong. Yeah, he. Um, it's a wonderful event because they bring in all kinds of different stuff, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it's not just any one style. And, mm -hmm. and 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 it's really all about the sharing exactly. of the knowledge from all these different people. So you have your style, but you see somebody else doing other stuff. So when you were curious, like, oh, so that's what that is. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're actually doing an event with him. Uh, November. November twentieth. Cool. Yeah. Where? Yeah. It's um, Mantica. In Mantica. Mantica. I'll, I'll, I'll invite you. You can be my guest. Oh, but you still have to buy the ticket, though. <laughs> I 
Of course. You gotta support. Yeah. No, no, yes, he's saying can. you have to buy his ticket along <laughs> oh, with yours. Oh, oh, I'm, no. <laughs> Remember, I'm Filipino. And, and, he, and he thought I was smart. <laughs> yeah. I said you sounded smart. <laughs> oh, we're just shy of the hour, actually. Good. So what we're going to do now, if, if, you, if you would indulge us... Um, Please. We'd like you to do some demos where you toss him around and beat the shit out of him or make him bleed out and see how long it takes. Because <laughs> that's part of his job is to, to be the Sorry. demo guy. So if you could cut him in the femoral or, or the... I don't karate. do that. I don't, I don't make people bleed out. That's not what he I do. He stitches them, okay? Oh, oh no. no. Don't get no. the next idea that well, you're I'll cut him nah, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I'll cut him and you can stitch him up and then oh we'll see how fast that works. <laughs> is that, Anyways. Yeah, okay. So can we get, see some of the things that you do teach... Yeah, sure. In your curriculum. Awesome. This That'd is be great. Folks, we'll be right back. We're going to oh, set the camera up. up. We'll see you in a few minutes. No bleeding. No right, bleeding. Folks, we're back. Um, I have a wrench. <laughs> hey, hit me with that thing and we'll see. <laughs> Medic. <laughs> He's right here. <laughs> um, so right now, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to these two guys. Yeah. Um, Martin Lee is going to be demonstrating uh, the stuff that he knows best. And that's not stitching people up, right? It's... He knows that pretty well. He too. knows that yeah, pretty well, but yeah. as far as your martial arts, ten stuff, years, we're gonna do that. You so be good at it. you guys have fun. Uh, okay. the, the the running rate is twenty five dollars. You can get him to squeal. So. That's no. <laughs> have no, fun. I like you so much. Oh my. Are you right here? Look at it. Uh, ambidextrous. Usually, are you right here? Look at it. Right hand. Ninety percent of the world's right-handed, so we based on a lot of our uh, self-defense techniques on that type of uh, attacks with the right hand. Sure so we are a right hand bias system. Mm. So even though we're an edge weapon system, we got to learn how to be able to bring our knife into a fight. So there's, there's a few logics in martial blade concepts. One is we teach you how to use your everyday carry knife, like so. And this is a Spider Koyo Jimbo. Mm. Two. Um, the next thing is you have to learn the destructive power of that knife. So if you are living in Chicago and you're only allowed to carry a two inch or three inch blade, you have to learn how to cut all the way to the bone with that small knife. So train with what you fight, right? And the third thing is, is stopping power. Uh, uh, Self-defense is all about stopping power. It's not about killing. You want to be able to effectively stop your opponent right away, okay? How do you do that? You, you do that by being a student of anatomy and physiology. Be able to identify parts of the body when cut will stop your opponent immediately. How do you do that? You, all of our techniques are based on instinctual response, easy to learn, and can be applied under stress. Hmm. And after we learn those techniques, we do high repetition of those critical skills under conditions that simulate life-threatening stress, but in a safe manner. And the most important part is being able to earn your draw. What does that mean? Earning your draw is be able to transition from an empty hand or from an improvised weapon to be able to bring your knife into a fight and be able to continue going and executing your technique. And that's the logics in martial blade concepts. So if we apply all that together, I am be, uh, using a, a uh, everyday carry knife, which is my Yojimbo 2, and my backup is gonna be the Spyderco Delica right here. Um, and why do I have a backup? Well, what if I draw my knife and it falls out? I need a backup. So that, that's that, okay? So being able to transition from um, empty hands to a knife, that's what I'm gonna do. So he has a wrench, and these are tr he's a trainer, by the way. Um, <laughs> and the most common attack is, if you, if you were mad at me, what type of gross motor skill? It would be just like that, it was a high overhand, right? And when we're under stress, how do we react instinctually? We put our hands up, so let's just use that as a technique. So what I'm, what I'm introduced is called a shoulder stop. And the shoulder stop is to basically stop him right here. I'm limiting the mobility to his shoulder joint, right? And, and notice that my arms are locked out. If they're bent, my structure is broken, and you can see he's coming in, I'm gonna get hit. But if I lock my hands out, that's pretty effective. So I'm gonna swing again, boom, I'm right there, right? So what if he swings again, and I, my hands slip, right? I, I can't maintain this function here, right? That's okay, we call this something called ramping. And if, if you know boxing, it's kind of like you're slipping, but you're kind of cheating away. So go ahead and swing again, and step in right here. Oh. And that's called, and, and if he does it hard enough, I already have my elbow here to go. So I grab, I knee him, I push him away, and I bring my knife into the fight. So now I've earned my draw, he still has a weapon in hand, and he is still, trying to attack me, I'm gonna give him verbal cue. Stop, 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 go away. If he does continue to come at me and I have nowhere to go, I have no choice but to defend myself. But, best case scenario. Here we go. So start over again. 
And I'm gonna show you the best defense. This is the best technique against someone attacking you with a weapon. I need you to pay attention because no other, no other secret system or martial arts will tell you this. I'm gonna give it to you right now. I'm so I'm gonna get in my fighting stance, and then when you're ready, tap me, go. Run, dude. Dude, I did not expect him to move that fast. Aware and avoid. If you can escape, bro, do you know how you don't have to fight me? That's Woo. you don't need that. That's just, why? I don't want to go to jail. Oh. There you go, man. But we don't. We live in an imperfect world, and there are crazy people out there, right? So the best case scenario: be coming, stop, stop, stop. He sways, boom. I'm here. I get the knee, bang, and I can run out that way and not deal with the fight. I'd rather do that. But I have nowhere to go. Then we bring the knife into the fight. So when we bring the knife into the fight, what techniques do we use? What concepts that we use? It's actually called the master technique. Master. And the master technique isn't something that is, it's not, it's, it's not a technique, it's actually concepts within one. And what the master technique teaches you is every time you swing with a knife, it's always a forehand motion and then a backhand motion. There's no this and that, that, just, that doesn't make sense. There's always a forehand motion, backhand motion. Forehand motion, backhand motion, right? You may ask why. Why? Why the forehand, yeah. Because it just flows that way. If, 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 if I cut you here, right. And I cut, look, look where the tip is, I can come back and cut you here. If I go like this and come back, I'm wasting time, hmm. right? So there's a forehand and backhand motion. And uh, what it also teaches is chambering points. When you, and for people who's never trained martial arts, your chambering points are your um, shoulders and your hips. So if I start spring from a shoulder, I have to end at a chamber point. So you can play with that, you can go anywhere, and it keeps everything nice and tight. So it teaches you how to use a forehand motion, backhand motion, it teaches you how to uh, chamber point, and also teaches our beginning footwork, which, which is walking, we walk. Then we introduce you to checking hand. We learn how to check, and finally we learn how to do the comma cut. And what the comma cut, it's like the punctuation, is creating that comma into the leg, and that's the most important thing, because that's really what's gonna stop your attacker. So how do we put that all in motion? So we're gonna go super slow. So here it is, I'm gonna take this, my live hand, my left hand, is I'm gonna go, we call this the casada. So it's, it's knife to wrist, hand to hand, and what I'm doing is I'm pushing the hand into the knife to cause a deeper cut. So that's my forehand motion. Now the backhand motion, look, what's exposed? We call this the reference point. So every time you see it, you yeah. cut it. So that's the tricep. So that, since I cut his tricep, he can't wield the weapon. So that's my forehand motion, this is my backhand motion. So I cut the tricep. Once I do that, I'm gonna do my first footwork, which is stepping. And if you look at him, he's this, all of our methods is based on a triangle. So if this is the base of the triangle, there's a point here and a point right behind him. So I'm drawing a line in between his leg, and I'm gonna step right in the center of that. So after I cut the, the tricep, I'm gonna step right here, and I'm gonna check. And what you're noticing is he's turned against his spine, and that's the most important thing. So if he tries to push back, go ahead, push back. He's off balance, right? <laughs> but look, if I don't turn, if his, if his, his spine is not turned, like right here, right? Okay. Then my structure is broken, look, and look at him. Go ahead, power through. I, I won't be able to hold it. So everything's all about structure. So once I cut here, boom, I'm gonna go like this, and what's gonna happen is, check this out. Just freeze for a second. I am gonna let go of my hand. I am gonna step off and take his leg, and then you're like, oh my God, he can come back and swing at you, at me, right? Let me hear me out. So right now, I want you to slowly rotate and give me a backhand. Okay. Where did all your weight go on? Your, no, your, oh. this, your right leg. See that? Oh yeah, yeah so this is where I pivot. So if we do this kind of in flow, and I just take the cut here, boom, and I check and do this, he takes his leg out, he's gonna, that's it. He's, he's, he's not gonna fall this way, he's gonna fall where, <laughs> so you good, brother? Yeah, I'm good. Sorry. No, 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 I know how to fall. <laughs> so if I cut his, just think about football. When you see someone get hit on the ACL, they don't get back up. They, they, get, up, they get, up, get off from a stretcher. Yeah. So we're, we're basically mimicked the same way. Dude, that's trippy. So check it out. So you, once again, a little slower, you've got your forehand motion, you have your backhand motion, you have your check, step off the quad. And then you exit the 30 degree vector because on geometry, yeah. what we talk about, yeah. if I'm going the same, if I'm going 30 degree vectors and he's trying to swing, do I try to swing at me? It's not gonna get me, right? But he's not gonna fall that way. He's not gonna be able to swing that way because he's gonna be falling that way because I cut his leg and he couldn't, he can't bear weight on it. So where are the concepts in that? This croissant motion. So this was your forehand attack, right? Check it out. Elbow, we talked about the um, the hand being above the level of our elbows. So yeah. I defended it with my palms up, right? Now come a low line right here. So is this below the level of my elbows? Yes. Same technique, watch. Hello out. Oh, what's there? The reference point. Cut, check, take out the legs, right? If that was a knife and he's coming down center line, is this below the elbows? Yeah. 
What's the difference? It's the same motion. Boom, cut, check, take out the legs. What about an overhead attack? Above the elbows, same technique. Why, why, why do more techniques? Right? Same and, technique, just high and low. <laughs> yeah, then, then we talked about, uh, I know we had a discussion earlier, you said, oh, what if he doesn't feed me that way or I don't remember what to do? That's a great question because we, th we then talk about something called deconstructing a, the technique. And what that is, is this slowing things down and taking parts of the technique and finishing up from where you left off. So for example, mm -hmm. if he does that forehand attack, normally I would cut here. What if I forget? Like, oh my God, it's coming in so fast. I evade, keep swing through. Oh, I remember that. I know the next thing is to do is cut, check, go for the leg. <laughs> what if I forget to cut, what if I forget to cut the arm? So he swings, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot to cut. I'll just check, boom, take a leg, and I'm gone. So it's, when it comes down to it, dude, it's to lower your standards. You know, keep everything simple, keep it huh. basic, keep it logical, train smart. And that's basically like the small gift of, of martial blade concept is taking all, and everything that we do for every angle, it ends the same way. It's the appetizer. So, wow. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was amazing, Mark. That, that was actually so much, there's so much logic in, in everything you said. That's Mike. I mean, yeah, Mike, kudos to you. Your, your boy here is pretty good at... Uh, but he said it his way. Yes, he did. I mean... We're yeah. gonna push that ladder the whole way, dude. <laughs> we're, we're not gonna give that up. <laughs> there can be room for improvement, Mike. There you go. <laughs> if, if you ever, <laughs> you think I'm cool at teaching, you should actually like YouTube and look at Michael Jett. Oh, we are like, going to. Oh, dude, we are going to. He, going. You think I'm dope? Him no, down here. He, he is really, really yeah. good. Well, yeah, you know, awesome. I, I'm just really impressed by, like I said, the logic in what you were showing. I mean, we, in our system, we always talk more logic than physicality. I mean, ours is always a verbal conversation and verbal lessons because if it sticks here, then it'll come out here. Right, so that's what I loved about what you were showing. Um, Advertising shout outs to anybody you want to do? Um, yeah, sure. What's up, Mike Janich? Thank you. How do people get a hold of you? Mike Janich. Oh, okay. Um, Instagram. So Instagram. Instagram, it's uh, train underscore until underscore forever. Um, and train until forever.com. That's my website. Um, you got swag, swag there. This is black on it's black. It's black on you black, so it's kind of it, hard though. to see. You can't see it though for a reason, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, or you can check out Facebook too, Train Until Forever, that's, that's, that's me, and it's all linked to uh, Marshall Blade Concept. I just use that company that I created. Do, do you personally do any uh, private trainings? I do. Teachings? Yeah. I do. Cool. But I mean, you have to be vetted for that. Vetted in? Yeah. How so? So you have to come do a Saturday class to know them, that you're not crazy, and that you're a good person. And I only train people who are humble, who are willing to learn, that doesn't have the yeah, ego to stick Shit. You're yeah, sure, you don't do yeah. psychotic. Yeah, no, 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 Filipino to Mexican. No, that's good. And, 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 and I have my own training facility, but it's it's, it's not open to the public, and, and right. it's it's an undisclosed location until. That's I where feel you that I go. Your privates are then. Yeah. Okay. Your privates. My private classes. At the master, master, wow, Mexican's wow. private. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, Mexican. We didn't mean to stand. But um, <laughs> race off the ground. <laughs> but also follow um, full grip. Uh, full Grip Barbell on Instagram. Oh, great place. And, yeah, great place. And uh, I teach their Saturdays. Um, awesome. When our schedule um, lines up. Again, but yeah. you you can just check the website or Full Grip. They'll, they'll announce it. Dude, That's the best way to do it. Thank you so much for coming out. Oh, oh thank, it's been an honor, brother. Dude, appreciate Mark. it. Thank you, man. Thank you. No, no, we'll see it was each fun, other man. again. Yeah. Yeah, Folks, yeah, this has been Kali Conversation with me, Rick. And me, Naeem. And our special guest, Martin, Martin Lee. Lee. And he is Chinese. Very much so. We've checked. <laughs> and God. Yeah, stay safe.